Greetings, YouTube people. I came across an interesting article on uh, on Yahoo News this evening, and uh, it was dealing with uh, agri-processors in Postville. And since I uh, used to live close by there and uh, had a number of friends in Postville, uh, the article was, was interesting. Um, and one of the things that, that really came to mind is they talked about the uh, wages and meat processing uh, over the years. Um, and uh, and, and it, it used to be a, a quite lucrative profession. I remember back in uh, in my days in high school, well, there were some friends of mine, and and uh, I was in the electronic side of things, and and they were taking classes on uh, on meat cutting. In 1960, uh, a person could be a general laborer in the meat processing field. And they could live a comfortable life and and opportunities for uh, you know for advancement. But even starting out, the wages were, were pretty decent. Uh, when you run some numbers, you find out in 1960 that was equivalent to uh, you know a, a kid coming out of high school making 15 bucks an hour in today's money, and that's you know that's that's pretty decent. Uh, in in 1981, in the meat processing field. Uh, starting wages uh, would be about 45 bucks an hour in today's uh, today's economy, and uh, but yet in uh, 2011 down there in Postville they're now paying 8.50 an hour, and uh, you know it's hard to get people to uh, you know to work for that, and I'm thinking okay well you know what what might be the case now you got people in politics this that and the other sort of thing and they're going well, well you know taxes it's it's you know government they they've screwed stuff up taxes are so much higher today that you know an employer can't afford to pay so i looked up the data on that and compared the tax rates in 1960 and the tax rates of today and well uh, it doesn't uh, uh, higher taxes ends up being merely uh, political talking points it's not reality uh, if you look at the uh, the highest 0.01% of wage earner and, and their total taxes, not just income, but everything, uh, they're paying about half today of what they paid way back when in 1960. So the, the whole tax argument is, uh, is pretty bogus. Um, it's an easy scapegoat and you want to make political points, sure, go ahead, but it's not reality. Uh, now... Some other folks have said, well, it's it's offshore competition. You know, if it was just us in the U.S., you know, we'd, we'd be fine because there's so much competition offshore, uh, we can no longer produce uh, meat products here in the States, and so we, our wages have to drop. And also they say that, you know, the unions are so strong and the government regs are so strong that the U.S. can't compete. So, you know, it's, it's if we want cheap meat, we've got to get it from, from offshore. And I'm thinking, well, let, let's take a look at what the costs of, of meat are. So, you know, in uh, I looked up some data on that, on, on the prices of meat, and if, if what they're saying is the case that the... Uh, you know, offshore competition has dropped the price of meat down so low that the wages have to drop, then it would make sense that uh, the prices should be quite a bit less today when we uh, run the uh, conversion factors over the years. Well, in 1960, a pound of hamburger, I just use that generically, was 45 cents a pound, and that's about $3.37 in today's dollars. In 2011, uh, the average... A uh, pound of hamburger sells for more, three dollars and ninety cents, and and you can see on my slide here I show where I've got those figures from. So, the bit about offshore competition, um, I don't think that's a, that's not a that's not a legitimate argument. You know, the taxes doesn't doesn't work. Uh, consumer prices are actually higher today. Uh, despite offshore competition. Unions, I mean, in the 1960s, unions were real powerful. They're not today. So that doesn't fly. Regulations, yes, the regulations today are, are much wider. In 1970, OSHA came into being, and uh, we have much safer workplaces. But, yeah, that's going to add some cost. However, in the 60s, we had family farms. Today we have large agribusiness and the economies of scale are huge. 
we also have uh, instead of uh, you know grass-fed beef and such which took vast quantities of, of real estate and time and, and money we now have corn-fed beef which you know it may not be as good uh, good for you from a nutritional standpoint but it's a whole lot cheaper to produce than uh, um, you know uh, uh, grass-fed but so we look at that and we should say well then you know with these factors um, wages should be the same maybe they should even be a little bit higher but they're not the wages are way way less so I said, well, you know, why is this? What's changed between 1960 and 2010? And you can't tell me that uh, government regulations have caused wages to decrease by, you know, uh, half or four times or whatever. It, it doesn't, that's, that's, that's unrealistic. However, I found a few things out when I looked at economic data and costs of items between 1960 and 2011. The cost per acre for Iowa farmland is 3.5 times higher. Housing costs are 2.5 times higher and fuel costs are double. Now, and, and that's after you do the conversion between $1960 and, you know, dollars today. But you go from 250 bucks an acre in 1960 to 5000 bucks an acre plus in 2010. So, you know, that's like, whoa. So we know that there have been major changes. So is it is it land that's causing the big thing? Um, I mean, I, I think there's a correlation. Is it causation? I don't know. I tend to think it is, though. You know, skyrocketing land prices, it, it makes... Uh, uh, that's going to, you know, raise your input. Fuel costs are up. That's going to raise your input. So if you got fuel and land costs that are going sky high, um, you have investors that are sitting there going, well, do we put money in meat processing or money in the land? Well, you put your money in the land, that's where you're going to get your greatest, you know, greatest return. Um, and you have taxes being quite a bit less, especially for the uh, the top 0.01%. It's, it's like, you know, 50% of what it was in 1960. So profits are, are going to be the same, or maybe they're up a little bit. But your fuel and your land, they're resource constrained. I mean, there's only so much land, and there's only so much oil that you can uh, can get cheap. Uh, you know, that you can drill cheaply and, and you know, I'll bring out of the ground and, and process. So we're here running up against those resource constraints. So if those, if everything else remains fixed, that people only pay so much for beef, but you got your inputs prices going way up and you don't want to touch profits because people can make money in other areas, uh, the only thing left to really work with is your labor costs and they're way down. You know, is it causal? I don't think there's enough data to say that it is, but boy, it sure seems like there's a huge correlation. Anyhow, that's my two bits on the matter and my comments for the day.